alternative experience. The alternative experience. The alternative experience. Hey everybody, Nikki Joe here. Welcome to another episode of Alternative Experience. I think it's episode 40. Woo, 40 under the belt. So this week I want to talk about breath work for emotional release. Is it another fad or a genuine route to a better life? Now, when it comes to breath work, it's not only about nervous system management techniques such as pranayama and slow, calm, intentional breathing. There is another side to this extremely powerful practice and that is release work. While in essence, it's still working with the breath to achieve a positive health outcome. These techniques really are extremely different to the normal day-to-day nervous system management techniques that I often talk about. Now, most day-to-day practice can be done in under five minutes and usually entails, as I say, slowing down that breath, calming the mind, etc. And a typical release session will be anywhere up to an hour and they tend to be highly repetitive, excitatory, um, fast-paced breathing techniques. And their focus really is on sympathetic nervous system activation and the reduction of CO2 in your system. And that's in a similar way to kind of hyperventilation. Now, I can't comment on other practitioners' techniques or sessions, but in my own practice, I also carefully create um, playlists that play alongside the technique which are specifically curated to build with the practice, like kind of adding a little bit of extra wind to the sail. Now, the final element is I also verbally guide my clients through their journey, helping to kind of slowly unlock whatever their blockage may be, trap trauma, uh, creative blockages, just general blockages, you know, up here where you're sort of stuck in your own mind, general stagnation, even acute and chronic illness. Now, that's all great but does it actually work? Well, let me start with the anecdotal evidence. First point, I can say without a shadow of a doubt that I believe it does. I've personally witnessed hundreds of examples of this over the last two years with both my direct coaching clients, um, those that have done our sort of online events and also our in-person retreats. But what's more profound, all of them seem to experience permanent change. It actually began with myself. Uh, I'd been researching release work for quite some time before I started practicing it. And I had tried the Wim Hof method like most people and had some initial benefit. However, due to how regular um, a practice that he encourages, it eventually led to me having quite a few negative side effects just due to how often I was firing up that sympathetic nervous system. Now, my issues were all a direct result of an already overly active fight or flight, a fact that's pretty much true for around about 98% of the population. That's not an overestimation. Those are estimations which seem to be highly accepted. Now, release work also fires up this nervous system in exactly the same way and for an even more prolonged period of time, you know, an hour at a time. But the way that it works is one session is usually enough to make enormous gains. And as such, there's much less need for constant practice. These are sort of uh, maximum once a month, but pretty much once every six months for, for my clients if, if they repeat them at all. So I'm not suggesting that obviously one session is going to cure everybody's ills. However, due to the duration of the typical practice, it really does help to unlock a great deal. And in my experience, it usually it's these things that we've been sort of holding on to, um, oftentimes ignoring altogether, which are the actual cause or uh, I suppose you call it spark of our initial imbalance. Now, the problem in its simplest terms is we have lost the ability to display emotion. It's kind of seen as weakness. It's not really accepted out there, especially with men, but most uh, most people uh, feel this way. And it's this constant bottling up of the things which bother us. It's kind of um, similar to it like a pressure cooker, which is just never being released. It's uh, constantly building pressure and it's ready to blow. Um, and I know there's some people here that are going, oh, you know, that's nice to hear man up. Um, Well, let me tell you why it's such a big problem. While I often talk about nervous system imbalance being the foundational problem which leads to all acute and chronic health issues, it's not quite the spark. That nervous system imbalance is there for a reason. And this reason is your trauma, your imbalance, your limiting beliefs, your underachievement, your overwhelm, 
your sadness, whatever it is that's not quite right. Um, but because we no longer know how to voice or even sort of deal with these emotions, we ignore them and we metaphorically kind of push them all down. They're kind of out of sight, but they're never out of mind. And more often, the more often you actually start doing this, the more that that pressure cooker is obviously going to gain momentum. And this eventually creates an ongoing but low-grade stress to everything that we do. It's unnoticeable, but it's there at all times. And I actually refer to this as the insidious death from a thousand cuts. It's not the first cut. It's the thousandth cut that will get you. Um, So some of you listening might think I'm talking a bit crazy, um, but let me kind of elaborate. When we don't release sort of um, emotions, especially those that fire us up, the effects on the body are actually drastic. It's the same as trauma. Now, the problem is our body doesn't know the difference between perceived threats from things like anxiety, low self-esteem, frustration, anger, agitation, or the threat of an actual physical attack. So this leads to the activation of our threat response and the fight or flight nervous system fires into action. But what's happening in our body when this happens? Well, your body, to put it in perspective, thinks it's facing a threatful situation. And this affects all of the downstream systems and organs that rely upon your nervous system, of which there are many. I've gone over it so many times, but I'm going to cover a few more again. It will dysregulate your organs and that the way they function. It's going to dysregulate how you digest food, what essential nutrients you take in. It affects your hormones through, uh, obviously, your endocrine system, your immune function, and even your natural sort of wakes um, sleep cycles too. And that, that obviously affects your energy too. It's the very reason why so many people suffer with digestive issues and gut problems. It's why so many people have crippling fatigue, brain fog, low mood. It's the reason why so many people have autoimmune issues. So back to release work itself. Does it work? And if so, how? Well, when you take part in the typical release session, especially one of mine, it's not easy. Unlike these, um, these sort of nervous system techniques that I talk about all the time, we're not breathing slowly, we're not calming the mind, we're not calming the body, we are breathing fast, repetitive, it's hard work and that goes both on the physical and the mental side. Your mind's going to be telling you throughout the entire practice, it's too hard, you can't do it, there's too long left. It's also going to manifest physically in a number of extremely uncomfortable ways for some people. Uh, Many people feel physical movements in the hips, like something is actually moving up from the solar plexus. Um, They can feel it in their chest, their throat, like a a trap, like they need to get something out. And they explain it as kind of uncomfortably painful, if that makes sense. You can also suffer with lightheadedness, pins and needles, even crab claws as the CO2 leaves your body and the vascular system contracts, taking your hand muscles with it. That's a bit of an un- uncomfortable one, but it does recover. But more importantly, it genuinely does release those blockages. If these are creative blockages, obviously that's never a bad thing. It gets your brain moving and that's, that's awesome. But if that is trauma-based or based on your own self-worth and these kind of anxious negative feelings, it can be extremely profound. But why does breathing this way unlock things that have been locked up for so long? Now, all of your resources are being dedicated to just getting through this extremely tough uh, mental and physical challenge. And the words being used to guide will also force you to kind of confront and release whatever it is that you've been holding down for so long. It's so effective. It's, uh, It's unbelievable. You need to experience it. But that brings me to the final part of one of my typical release sessions. After nearly an hour of this repetitive breathing, fighting the many sort of physical, mental and emotional manifestations, we end the technique by screaming at the top of our lungs. It's a primal scream, a really powerful scream. We let it all out. That is the release. Now, we've just worked for an hour to get these blockages moving, bring them up to the surface and come face to face with them. And now it's time to really let them go, really release them all together. And while that sounds simple, wow, you scream, how profound. Um, For most people, after that long, arduous sort of experience, this alone is almost impossible, just screaming, just shouting. People feel stupid. They feel as if they're going to be judged. And on the odd occasion, some people will even fail to scream or scream properly. And that obviously affects the end result. 
But the reason I say it is it's just another example of how we've been conditioned not to show our emotions, you know. Release work is profound. And while this sort of podcast is focused more on my own repeated anecdotal experience, as well as um, many millions of people around the world that have also engaged in these types of practice, there is also a large body of research on the subject which is starting to come out backing up these claims. But that's for a separate article. What are your thoughts do you think I'm talking a load of hot air? Oh, pun down. Have you tried release work yourself? If so, how did you find it? What kind of protocol did you practice? Similarly, I'd be very interested to hear from those of you that haven't tried it. Get in touch and find out about our regular online sessions, those one-to-one personalized coaching programs and in-person retreats. They really are incredible. They're very, very powerful. If you've got any blockage, anything you're trying to deal with, definitely worth at least arranging a sort of discovery call i do highly recommend it and i will tell you this change your breath change your life it is so unbelievably powerful you need to give it a go like share and subscribe until next time big up yourselves